deal with section one and section two. In section one, just to get us to where we're going, in section one, it begins this book by telling us that there's a new king that came to power in Egypt who did not know Joseph. When Joseph was alive, Joseph was Israel's protector. Now that Joseph is dead, Israel's number has become her defense. Get the wisdom of that. Israel's number, we're better together. Israel's number has become her defense. So the children of Israel are transitioning into the place that God has called them to be in. And while they are transitioning, the new Pharaoh is having a board meeting. The new Pharaoh is meeting with his people and he's telling them that there are too many of those Israels to handle. We've got to do something so let's devise a plan to contaminate them, to, I'm sorry, to contain them, to control them, to restrain them. The enemy wants to control you, restrain you, and contain you. But tell somebody, oh, I'm getting up out of this thing. He said we need to do it because when we get to war, they may turn on us. I believe, Pastor Hennings, that what was going on there is that the new king was the epitome of a person intimidated by the saints. Oh, he was intimidated by the saints. Can I put this in the house? There are many of you who are here today that's dealing with people that are intimidated by you. But the devil is a liar. You didn't ask for it. You didn't play nobody. You didn't lie to get it. You didn't cheat with nobody. You didn't sleep with nobody's husband, nobody's wife. But God gave you that position. And what God has for me. So in our text. So in our text, real briefly. So in our text, Pharaoh plans to wear them out. Just look at somebody and say, just in case you don't know, the devil want to wear you out. He's not even interested right now in killing you and taking you out. He just want to wear you out. He want to wear your mind out. He want to wear your strength. He want to wear you out until you, but I'm so glad that Luke 22 of the golden and 31 says when he was talking to Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. Listen to this. It says Satan has asked excessively for you. Every time I turn around, Satan is asking for you. Every time I look up, Satan is asking for you. He wants to sip you as we, but God has got your back. God has got your back. God, he said, but don't worry, I pray for you. I pray for you. That your strength. Now, that's a meanwhile back at the text. Whew, the Egyptians demoralized Israel. But it said, my brothers and sisters, this thing blessed me. Now, in great one. Oh, this thing blessed me. It said, but the more they oppressed them. The more they The more they oppressed them, the stronger they became. Somebody here has that testimony that the more they lied on me, the stronger I became. The more they said I could not do it, the more they set my agenda to do it. The more they said I wasn't going to make it, the greater have any real people up in here that have said I made it because they said I wasn't going to make it. Thank God. Marvin Sapp said I'm strong, I'm wise, and I'm better. Check this out. Listen to this. 
Isn't it funny how your growth can be someone else's grief? Isn't that funny? Matter of fact, I think about it. How you gonna grieve over my growth when you the one told me to hold on? You the one told me to hang in there. You the one told me God's gonna use you. You're the one that told me don't quit the church, don't leave the church. You're the one. I am a product of your prayers. I am a product of your prophetic word. I, I am a product of what you say. How, 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 Brother Chucky, can my growth become somebody else's grief? My brothers and my sisters, if we're not careful, in the house of the Lord, we, instead of celebrating growth, we'll try to defame growth. Because the thing I found out about growth at my house, if it's destined to grow, it's gonna grow. Sister Karen, I neglected to water up ivies and thinking that they were going to die and I come home and they're, they're alive and well and running all over places they don't have any business to go because they were destined to grow. <laughs> Just look at your neighbor and say in spite of. In spite of. I was destined <laughs> to grow and if you have a problem now you better see a grief counselor. Because Isaiah said it doesn't matter what you put in my path that tries to stop me from growing. Isaiah the 54th chapter said that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I shall condemn. But what God has put on the inside of me. So now we go to chapter 2. And at that chapter 2 of this text, we find out where the scripture is that we're going to use. And chapter, chapter, in section 2, I'm sorry, section 2, chapter 14. Here we find the children of Israel in the midst of a desperate situation. The thing that baffled me is that the situation was a situation that God himself directed them into. And he did it not because he wanted to demoralize them but he did it because he wanted to show them his faithfulness whatever we're going through my brothers and my sister it's about the faithfulness of God so Moses the Lord somebody say the Lord the Lord spoke to Moses as Israel GPS system and he said, tell the Israelites, tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near pi Haharath between Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite of Beelzephon. The change in the direction will cause Pharaoh, the enemy, to think that y'all are confused. He said the enemy won't be able to figure out what's going on. So all he can do is declare it confused because if I cannot figure it out, I have to make something up. But every now and then, God isn't going to allow you to figure out what's going on. He said that they will think that we are confused. In other words, they will see themselves in an unexplainable season. Do I have anybody in here that's honest enough to say I've had some unexplainable seasons. People will think that you are confused, but what you're really doing is that you're fulfilling an act of obedience from the Lord. So Pharaoh would think that you're wandering around in a land of confusion. And they would think, this is one point I want to bring, and we're going to bring it in, Bishop White. But there's one thing that say Pharaoh would think that you're caught 
in the middle. Who indecisive operating in the middle? Is there anybody in here has ever felt like you were trapped in the middle? Want to go to the right, want to go to the left, but I cannot because I'm trapped in the middle. I'm trapped in a relationship. I'm, I'm trapped in a system. I'm trapped in a, a job. I'm trapped in a business. Because see, what you have to realize with Israel at this particular time where they were located by Haharit means that they were in a place of impassable rocks. They couldn't move on their own. Not only was it impassable rocks, but Dr. Hennis, it was also a place of a mouth of the defiled. Have you ever been trapped by the mouth of the defiled? Trapped in the middle. I can't go to the left. I can't go to the right. But one thing I want to pronounce on this house. Uh, there's a blessing in the middle. Uh, he doesn't have to bring me out to bless me. Because everything that God had for the children, he started in a situation that seemed impossible. And I come to tell somebody, you're about to be blessed in the middle. So don't panic because Romans 8 and 18 says that I reckon that the suffering of this here present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. I see some glory coming your way. Hey, so here they were, trapped in the middle. But what they didn't know, what they didn't know, what they didn't know, what they didn't know. is that they were only there because God put them there. That's kind of contradictory to the God that we've been hearing about because the God that we hear about, somebody made him a sugar daddy. Somebody made me think that every time I called him that I was going to feel him. Somebody forgot to tell me that it's not about a feeling, but I have to call on Jesus and believe that while I'm calling, he's already answered. So here Jesus is. He's the great puppet master. He said, I'm going to take you to the middle, but my purpose for taking you there is so I can get the glory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever, whatever, whatever you're going through, God wants to get the glory. Tell him it's not about you, but it's about his glory. Somebody scream, get the glory. I'm almost finished. You have it where he said, I'm going to get the glory. I'm going to send Pharaoh after you so I can get some glory. Church of God in Christ, whatever we're going through, check this out. God just wants to get some glory. That's all. We're about to steal God's glory because we can't figure it out. If Paul was at the Holy Convocation, the 104th Holy Convocation, Paul would tell you in 2 Corinthians 11 and 25th, Bishop Porter, it would say three times I've been beaten with a rod. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked by night and by day. I've been in deep, I've been hungry and I've been naked. I've been days, Bishop Haynes, with and days without. But he picked it up in Philippians 1 and 12 and said, but I want you to know, church of God in Christ, that the things that have happened unto me has been for the father of the gospel. If it wasn't for the furtherance of the gospel, some of us would have been not cut somebody. But thank God it was for the gospel. So here we go and I'm closing. I really am. So now you have Pharaoh and his 600 chariots. Chosen chariot. Josephus said that it was over 50,000 horsemen. 
80,000 footmen gearing up to pursue Israel. That's a point right there. People, where you are right now, the enemy is sending out the mega demons to shut you down. You're so powerful. You're so anointed. Don't let nobody tell you that God isn't using you. You know yourself, God is you. You are having your own six o'clock prayer meetings. You're calling people all over the universe, asking them to chime in. Nobody gave you that assignment. So the devil is mad at you. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy. So at this point, Israel felt that they could not achieve the victory. But I thanks be unto God who always giveth us the victory. Look what they started to do. They started to complain. Oh, they started to complain. <laughs> they, okay. They started to complain. They said to their leader, were there not enough grace for us in Egypt? They didn't believe that God had spoken to Moses. They thought Moses was moving out on his own. So they got mad at Moses and said Moses you could have left us in Egypt but if you're going to hold on and know God has got your back the first thing you must do is you got to let go of past influences look at your neighbor and say let go of past conspiracies they were talking about Egypt Egypt was bondage Egypt was enslavement Egypt was control. My big mama used to sing a song. God delivered me. Why should I be bound? I'm not going to be bound by my past. Philippians 3 and 13 says, forgetting those things which are behind me. And I'm going forward. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever my past is, God has covered me in the blood. Let me tell you, there is an Australian kangaroo. An Australian kangaroo tail is so large until the Australian kangaroo, he cannot look behind. He cannot back up because his tail is too long. I come to tell somebody, your tail it's too big to back up now. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me and the cross in front of me. Say yes. Oh, yes. Look at your neighbor and say, no turning back. No turning back. The next thing they say. Said Moses, tell the children of Israel, do not fear. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't be scared. My second point uh, is you have to harness your emotion. Fear is an emotion. And I'm so glad God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power. Can I get the sanctified people to scream power? Power, Lord. Power, power, Lord. Power. When fear try to grip my spirit, I got power to use the word of God. Isaiah 41 and 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. And my favorite scripture, Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, my enemies, and my foe came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though wars shall rise up against me, in this will I be confident. What thing have I 
desire of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to inquire in this hymn for in the time of trouble he shall hide me where the devil can't find me hide me say yes yes oh look at your name and say neighbor don't panic God has got your back tell another neighbor neighbor don't panic God has your back don't be afraid Don't be afraid. The next thing he says, stand still and see the salvation. Somebody scream, stand still and see the salvation, which means you must stabilize yourself and have foresight as you go through in order to stabilize. Stand still is an expression of a reverence as well as a fixed commitment. It's time for the church of God in Christ to operate on a fixed commitment. Not just a fixed income, but you gotta have a fixed commitment. Till you say the storm may rise, the wind may blow, but I'm not going anywhere. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. Say it. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which the Lord will show to you. Salvation as an objective change. Salvation as objective change so stand still because a change is gonna come up in this house tell your name a chain a chain is about to come in my house a chain is about to come in my life i know the essence of change because when i met jesus he changed my life things i used to do i don't do them because i'm coaching i don't do them because i'm a woman in the church but things i used to do i don't do anymore because i don't want to disappoint jesus and everywhere i go jesus is already there if i make my bed in hell he's already there if i go to the utmost part of the world He's already there. See ya. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, change is about to come in your house. Change. Somebody scream, change. Change. From need to fulfillment. Change. From problems to solution. Before I leave the convocation, come on, make that proclamation. Before I leave the convocation, God's gonna turn some things around. Before I leave the convocation, no, 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 let's bring it on home. Before I leave this here service, before I leave my role, before I leave my before I leave this house, God will. Look down your road. Look down your road and declare and decree. This is a road of change. This is a road of turnaround. This is a road that God has worked out. This is a road that healing is on my road. This is a road where money cometh. This is the road where the blind see. This is the road where the lame walk. Somebody scream, change. For the Egyptians whom you have seen, you shall see them again no more. This is the last point. You must embrace 
the certainty of God. For the Lord shall. Somebody say shall. For the Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall wipe your tears away. The Lord shall heal your body. The Lord shall save your grandchildren. The Lord shall save your family. The Lord shall enlarge your territory. The Lord shall cause an increase in your life. The Lord shall just tell three people, God shall, God shall, God shall, God shall, God shall. shout but what I want you to know is that Pharaoh and his men came after them God sent forth the east wind which blows dryness harshness because he didn't want them to get trapped in what he said to deliver them through I come to tell somebody you're not going to get trapped in that thing I know you can't talk about it I know the church doesn't set up a scene for us to be honest and talk about our Red Seas. But you're not going to drown. Yeah, you aren't going to drown. God has a rescue. As a team, be still and know that I am God. For the Egyptians who you've seen today, you're going to see them no more forever. For the Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. They made it to the next side. Because God had their back. Thank you for standing all over the building. Thank you. You're already standing. But can I get you to turn around? Put your hands on somebody's back. Matter of fact, put both of your hands on their shoulder. Then the two of you agree it's in touch. We're going to have to break it up. You can't have a chain, but you have to turn around and take them by both hands. Come, Pastor Micaiah, let's do a demonstration. Because every now and then you just need to know somebody has. That's all. I don't, I don't care how saved and how sanctified you are. Every now and then. Every now and then. That's it. That person is dealing with some enslaved thoughts. That's it. Girl, you are no one to Man, you are anointed. You may not have the might, but you've got anointed. You're getting ready to open your mouth all over this building. 